Do you know what the worldwide withdrawal of the AstraZeneca so-called vaccine means? I'll tell you what I think it means. It means that those who locked us down, destroying lives, who pushed jabs as far as they could, all of it under false pretenses, are getting away with it. For those finding cause to celebrate the withdrawal of one product, I say there's no victory because there are no admissions of wrongdoing, no consequences. If we don't face up to that reality, then we will compound our losses by tacitly making plain we accept what happened and furthermore that we accept it will all happen again and likely right soon. The jabbed dead and injured are still dead and injured. Those damaged or destroyed by lockdown still carry the wounds. Those whose reputations were wrecked for speaking out against state policies are still outcast. The businesses that closed are still gone. The piles of profit from the so-called vaccines and from the lousy PPE, mountains of which, useless and never used, are being incinerated. All that money's probably still being counted. The generation of children damaged by lockdown remains damaged. The greatest transfer of wealth in history happened. Job done. The billions that took the jabs remain jabbed forevermore. Those that questioned all along those that were derided as anti-vaxxers, derided as cranks and cooks, none of their abusers will ever have to say they might have got it wrong. Not one word. The many that pushed the official narrative, the pundits that led the ridiculing and destruction, every last one of them remains standing, reputations and earning potential untouched, already rewriting history to disguise their betrayal of fellow human beings, and available to do all the same again in furtherance of the next abuse of humanity. For those that publicly challenged the narrative or said no to authority or just asked questions, for all of that, the only victory is knowing we did right and doing the right thing must be its own reward because the louder and most unavoidable truth of all is that no good deed goes unpunished. Those who questioned, those who said no, even now are still being punished because the reality is that while the guilty forgive each other for all they did wrong, those same guilty will never, ever forgive us for daring to question. We will remain unforgiven until the end of time. Let's remember the depths to which the cheerleaders sank, those politicians, TV pundits, newspaper journalists and editors, and actors from A-list to Z-list who salivated at the thought of so-called anti-vaxxers being left with nothing, being denied hospital care, left to die, sacked from their employment, denied access to any public place, socially and reputationally ruined for having the temerity to have a spine and an honest heart. If the guilty could have got away with it, the unjabbed would have been permanently sealed in their houses and forbidden food. That's what so many of our fellow citizens wanted, what so many shouted for. Let us at least remember that. The intention was nothing less than ruin and exile to outer darkness for those who said no. But of course, it was an emergency. We were all in it together. Let's remember all that behaviour, the pleasure taken by the mob in shunning others, banning family members from their homes. Let's remember when so many people were emotionally and financially on their knees, those who preached it was fine to be barred from the bedsides of the dying, from the funerals of loved ones. Let's remember those that thought it right that people lose everything for saying no to an unproven medical intervention, while brothels offered freebies to those that had offered their arm to the needle, while fast food joints remained open and gyms and play parks were padlocked shut. Ah, but you see, it was a difficult time and now it's time to move on, to forgive and forget. All of that happened and those that contrived it choreographed it, are still standing, insisting they were just doing their jobs. Even though it has been confirmed over and over again that Big Pharma and governments knew in advance blood clots from the AstraZeneca jab were foretold, predicted and duly happened. Even though it has been confirmed that Big Pharma and governments knew in advance of the first jab being stuck in the first arm, that those products would not stop transmission. The same stooges stood behind podiums or broadcast via their TV shows and newspapers that it was a matter of duty for every man, woman, pregnant woman, child and newborn baby to take the jabs to save granny, to save all loved ones. 100% effective, take this jab and Covid is over, remember that one. 
It's nothing less than fact that since they knew all of that in advance, that they even had to go the length of changing the definition of the word vaccine, changing what it means, where before a vaccine was something taken to prevent a person contracting a disease, now a vaccine is something to make a disease less hurty. Not only have they got away with all of it, politicians, big pharma, the scientists, the media and the rest rattling with profit, but they have set in place the blueprint which will be used to both justify and enforce whatever abomination they launch next. Let's pause to remember more of what happened, the deaths of so many of the elderly, out of sight in care homes and on shuttered wards, misuse of PCR tests in pursuit of frightening numbers, the disregarding of the fact the average age of death, and no one can deny this, was 83 older than life expectancy, the changing of the way excess deaths are counted so that tens of thousands are still dead, but their deaths are no longer regarded as excess, quite the contrary. Where victims of harm attributed to the so-called vaccines are to be paid compensation, every cent of that money will come from taxpayers. The companies, remember, were granted indemnity long ago, which means the government said that whatever happened, death included, those companies would be held accountable and culpable for precisely nothing. And while we're at it, let's remember furlough, how most people received free money to finance their staying at home, while the self-employed received zilch. Many of those self-employed lost everything, but if they are still with us, having found other ways to make a living, they are required to share the burden of repaying the furlough they were denied, but that was enjoyed by others at their expense. I say again, there's no victory here, nothing whatever to celebrate. The guilty prospered and walked away scot-free while the innocent suffered and continued to suffer and that's about as much as can honestly be said. It had to happen this way, the dictatorial rollout of the plan, followed by its ending precisely on their terms and only when it suited them, utterly without consequences, for any of them, because happening this way, rubbing our noses in the fact it all happened and that there will be no consequences for them, manoeuvres or perhaps torments is closer to the mark, the affected populations into silently and humiliatingly consenting to the certainty that when it happens again, we won't be able to pretend we haven't seen it all before and yet demanded no accounting for harms done. If we accept now this rewriting of history, this drip, drip, drip of truth, this absolving of the guilt of so many who caused or celebrated so much harm, then we will have learned nothing. I'm not talking here about the next so-called pandemic, or not just about pandemics. I'm talking about a blueprint that will be followed for the peddling of whatever crisis they dream up next. The existential threats remain bigger than ever. We're still looking down the barrel of digital IDs, of central bank digital currencies, of 15-minute ghettos, of the end of meat on our plates, the end of private ownership of cars and God knows what else, the end of freedom of speech, in fact the end of freedom full stop. Ask yourself why governments across the West, around the world, are in overdrive in their efforts to seize control of the internet, to make it a crime to challenge authority, a crime to think far less to speak freely. Another part of the blueprint is making it illegal to disagree with whatever the powerful say is so. We're still in the shadow of Chinese-style social credit systems, except a version offering more complete control to our captors than anything even the Chinese Communist Party has yet pulled off. Governments hollowed out and powerless, made meaningless. Nation-state governments enthralled to the one and only one world government. Those puppets did as they were told and so used the Covid debacle, the so-called scamdemic, to lay the foundations of the digital gulag archipelago that is the real objective. No election anywhere is going to make a shred of difference when every parliament is the nesting ground and breeding ground of the uni party, while everyone was distracted by what I call a scamdemic. I say a pandemic of nothing more than farcical testing, a pandemic of jabs. While everyone was distracted, the World Health Organization rewrote its paperwork to outrank nation states. Have you paid attention to that one yet? Now the World Health Organization, paid for by software salesman Bill Gates, and despite the suggestion in recent weeks of a climb down, remains poised to lock us down whenever it wants and to take control of whatever it sees fit under the guise of saving the planet. The Green Agenda, Agenda 2030, which is the daddy of all hoaxes. Here's the thing, people died, like people die every year, of respiratory viruses. But remember how we were told anyone dying 28 days after a positive PCR test was a Covid death. Remember the vagueness of with or from Covid, all of its smoke and mirrors. 
Now more and more people say the stats show there was nothing new and remember to ask questions about precisely how the elderly died in the care homes. Now more and more people say the stats show it was nothing unusual in 2020, nothing new. Let this sink in. What if all of it, lockdowns, so-called vaccines, destruction of lives, the altering of our world forever, what if it was all done on the back of lies and propaganda? There is no victory here. No one stands accused, except the so-called anti-vaxxers convicted long ago. No one pays a price except the ever-suffering taxpayers milked for more hard-earned cash to make them poorer than before. No one takes responsibility, and as sure as eggs is eggs, the next global emergency is hurtling towards us. And unless we finally wake up, get wise to the scam and say no and mean no, unless we do that, we will only have ourselves to blame.